Uh, we, this is The Avengers, The Cross-Dressing, written by Bob Patrick Harris and drawn by Mike Diddy Dardo Jerk. This is the start of the reviled crossover which Kurt Busey hates because it is from the 90s and the 90s are shit. We do have this nice shiny cover. Shiny things are nice. And I tell you what, none of Kurt Busey's comics are shiny. It's also got a wraparound cover. The team and not even all the team, just the characters. Mike Diddy Dardo Jerk as redesigned and they all have pretty poor redesigns except for Charlotte Witch here in the middle. I think that's a good design. We start off this story with the wasps, but not the main wasps, not Janice Van Halen. This is the second wasps. The one who was a villain, but then became a goody bird. And you would have a really hard time identifying her because Mike Diddy Dardo Jerk has randomly put her in a new costume that has absolutely now in common with her hard one. She is falling through time because this is a story with time travel. And here she is seeing a dark future that is meant to convince us of the seriousness of this story. Because this is what will happen if the baddies win. And there is Hawkeye and Scarlett Johansson. Uh, let's talk about this version of the Wasps for a bit. She was a character that was created to be a foil to Janice Van Halen. She was created by Roy Sternman, and after a while, Simon Walterson, he had her join the Avengers for a story, a really good story. And then after that, writers seemed to have never known what to do with the character. She would randomly show up being a villain again, or she randomly joined the Galactical Guardians. And now she is just randomly time travelling at the start of this crossover. And there is four in his hideous Mike Diddy Dardo jerk costume. One immediate problem is that Bob Patrick Harris doesn't seem to know about this version of the Wasps. And... Has her familiar with characters she never actually met, like Orkai and Scarlett Johansson and Iron Man. I don't think he realises she was only in one issue as a member. Uh, there is the ugly Iron Man armour that doesn't even match up with the armour on the cover. And this bit with her seems to really think that she could just walk into Avengers Mansion and be welcomed as like an odd member and a friend when she was only in one issue and it was more the case that she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Both before and after she was a member of the Avengers, she was also part of attacks on the mansion. So really, Bob Patrick Harris seems to have just read a handbook entry rather than looked at her art appearances. Uh, this woman here, she is, she's the Flash's daughter from the future. As I said, there is a lot of nonsense in this story. Although, according to Kurt Busey, this isn't the Flash's daughter from the future. It's a space pants man, making this entire bit here with her explaining how she is the Flash's daughter from the future pointless. Speaking of pointless, it is the pointless death of the Wasps. We just spent seven pages with her and that was all just to build her up to have her killed off right at the start of the storyline. She is killed outside of Avengers Mansion by a mysterious shadowed figure. And the rest of the story could be a murder mystery at Avengers Mansion. And that sounds better than what we got. Although, again, here, the Wasps, 
she is, she responds to her murderer with, hey, it is you. Thank God you are not going to believe what has happened to me. So it's written like she is, again, familiar with this character when she has never even met him before. The Flash's daughter, the one from the present who is a little baby, she sees the murder happen. Then we have got the Avengers stopping a mugger in a subway. And I think having a whole team stop a single mugger is a bit overkill. We have got Giant Man and Gordon in an ugly costume. The Wasps, Janice Van Halen, she's not even wearing a costume. And the cover's quite thick and it keeps folding over if I didn't hold it. Uh, then we've got the Flash's girlfriend, Iris. Uh, the Flash there. And finally, we have got the Smurf from The Excellent Men. And then, here is Hawkeye, as he fires an arrow at the mugger's hand, and blood spurts out, offering a completely out-of-character Hawkeye appearance. I will say that his costume looks better without the mask and with a jacket covering most of it. Meanwhile, Robert Downton Abbey Jr. is walking around Avengers Mansion. He's having his own private little clip show of memories about being young. And here is Charlotte Witch. And as I said, this costume is the only one that is good. She's wearing a jacket here that covers it a bit. But this is better than her regular costume, in my opinion. And here is Hercules Man, who didn't even make the cover. Loads of characters in this book didn't make the cover. Hercules Man, Iris, the Smurf, both the Wasps. Hercules Man, he gets visited by the Flash's daughter from the future, who gives him a very cryptic warning because we can't reveal our hand this early into a crossover. Meanwhile, Scarlett Johansson, the Wasps and Aunt Gordon, they are investigating a mysterious door that appeared in Avengers Mansion. This had been a subplot for a while. There was a mysterious door that suddenly appeared in their basement. It is a portal, but they never really cared enough to work out what it actually is. There is the Smurf wearing a backwards cap because it was the 90s and the Avengers are being absolute idiots and decide to just ignore the door and not consider it a security risk or trying to find out where it leads. Uh, there is Life Cry there. She is from the 90s but she is smoke and mirrors. Life Cry really gets Del a pretty shitty hand because she is from the 90s. She was in quite a lot of Avengers issues and was a proper character, but Tom Beaver has said loads that he really hates her. So when he came on board as Avengers editor, which she has sadly been for 20 years now, she was quickly exercised from even acknowledgement in their history and then we have got all the avengers together and i do love this bit it's good fun they are playing poker and it's a fun scene they have nice interactions and the dynamic between these characters is great and one of my favorite aspects of this scene of, of this issue of the of the whole crossover even is that this is the last time that the Avengers was ever written as a team. After this, Kurt Busey and Mike O'Brien Benson, they have them as like a clique. Only the members that they deem worthy are ever acknowledged. Usually the ones from their own personal nostalgia or the characters that they have created. So whenever there's like an Avengers reunion like this or a picnic they apparently don't invite members they'll just invite the ones that the writers like like iris here she was an avenger for nearly a hundred issues and 
she hasn't appeared in an Avengers book in a long, long time. And here, this guy here, Flagman. Flagman is one of my favourite characters ever. He was created by Marty Mark Griswold and he was a Captain America character. He was like the right wing Captain America, but it was handled well and never demonised his political views. Nor did it make them extreme to the point of caricature. Flagman is, in my opinion, the best representation of the right wing in all of comics. But of course, he has been ostracised from the Avengers and from modern comics because he has the wrong leanings, even though he fucking stopped the lynching of a black man and regularly opposed militant racists. This issue is the last time Flagman is really treat as an Avenger. He had been a member for ages on the West Coast team, but like Life Cry was deliberately shoved away from counting. We also start setting up Hawkeye as being antagonistic towards Iron Man, combined with him impaling that guy's hand earlier on. Clearly, it was meant to suggest Hawkeye might be the murderer, but that idea isn't communicated all that well, and he's a red heron anyway. Bob Patrick Harris was clearly setting up getting Charlotte Witch and Division back together. They had been separated for years, but the Avengers book was given a Martin Quaid instead, and it dies at the hands of Onslaught Man, so they never actually get around to getting back together. And then Kurt Busey went out of his way to wreck on their relationship and make them not be together. But because the Avengers ignored the magic door in their basement, now they are being attacked by soldiers from it. And you've got to turn the page sideways to see it, and I love doing that. Comics I make you do that are the best. And then we've got an image of all the team that was clearly not drawn by Mike Diddy Dardo Jerk. You can tell from Aunt Gordon's face here. That is not his style at all. So they fight off these soldiers and it's probably the least exciting bit of the whole comic. And the soldiers, they were chasing after this odd man. He's an Avenger, an odd member of the team. I can never remember his name, though. He is one of the new gods. Anyway, he dies, having not said a single line of dialogue or even done anything. Because one Avenger being abruptly killed off wasn't good enough to kick off a big storyline. Future Flash Daughter shows up again, and if you're really wondering what the actual plot happening is, you are far from the only one. So, the Flash's daughter won't stop crying because she done saw the murder at the start, and her nanny gans to look for her favourite toy in the basement, and she encounters a mysterious shadowed man, who then kills her and the killer it was iron man iron man robert downton abbey jr he was the murderer all along except every character in this book doesn't count and was space pants man's or smoky mirrors this isn't terrible the cross-dressing storyline is but the start here is pretty average there are some bits that work Seeing a bunch of the members together is great. And the mystery with the door in the basement, that is intriguing. But then there is a lot of shit. Killing off three characters for dramatic effect. Characters being incredibly stupid. And the art, which is by a bully boy. Iron Man being a murderer is a topic for discussion in another video. If you include Kurt Busey's retcons, this issue goes from average to incomprehensible. 
Shiny cover though, shiny cover, seven thumbs up. 